All right, welcome to Mr. Coach D's 2.3 Get Connected lesson. Uh, click here for the link to the PLTW assignment. All right, so as you want to, you can come over to the PLTW website. Um, remember that your stuff on here, you should have saved it by now. If not, email me and I can get back to you. Reset them passwords, but you should have already set that up in the beginning. If you did not, then we will refer back to that later. So it should take me to the 2.3 getting connected lesson, which will look like this. But I also took that those slideshows and put them in here. So, all right. Um, and then you also, if you click on the micro bit logo, it will open the micro uh, Microsoft make code environment and you'll see our little make code micro bits up here. We actually got those in. I'm kind of excited. Um, we got to get a work order in to make sure they can connect to the computers, but I was able to connect to my computer. So that was kind of cool. All right. In here, download hex links files, All right? If you open that up, there should be a file in there. It says two, three math. I'm going to Come over here, press download. I'm gonna put that into my downloads, all right? Save it there, so when I need to come back to it, it's there. All right. So, um, just gonna go ahead and get started. We're gonna start with the Bluetooth technology. I'm gonna read through this. All right, according to legend, the 10th century Viking King Harold Blot Tand, peacefully united several Danish tribes to form one kingdom. His last name, Blattend, translates in English to Bluetooth. In 1997, a new wireless technology was developed that connected many digital devices. The developer thought that King Harold Bluetooth would have been pleased to see mobile computers and cell phones united by simplifying how they communicate with each other. The new technology was named Bluetooth because it connected many digital devices like the one, like King Harold Bluetooth uniting of the Danish tribes. Even the Bluetooth icon and logo you see on computers and smartphones today is a combination of King Harold's Bluetooth initials and the Old Norse alphabet in ancient language. Look at all King, Viking King. He got a, a uh, what is it, a scepter, right? All right, you'll notice uh, at the top is the Bluetooth icon, right? So today's Bluetooth wireless technology uses a standard radio signal to send packets of data from one digital device to another. The signal that Bluetooth technology uses is a 2.4 gigahertz shortwave radio frequency, so it doesn't travel long distances. This is perfect though. When you want to listen to some music through headphones connected wirelessly to your nearby smartphone. Smart devices. King Harold Bluetooth would probably be proud of how wireless technology has improved and connected more electronic devices over the years. Your smartphone can change the temperature inside your house or start your car. While you're watching a movie, your TV can display on, an, on its screen a text message notification from your smartphone. You can even activate a security alarm automatically when you leave your house. The term Internet of Things is described to uh, is used to describe the ever-growing network of connected physical devices. These electronic things, known as smart devices, communicate with each other using Wi-Fi, cellular, or Bluetooth technologies. Your microbits are smart devices because they can communicate with each other and with other devices. As the Internet of Things expands, the security of those smart devices becomes important. Through security features, you can control how and what smart devices are connected to each other. All right, so now we're going to start into the wireless technology. As you explored the digital dive and activity 1.1, the brain, digital devices can communicate with each other through wired and wireless connections. In this activity, you'll practice creating programs and setting data wirelessly between two microbit controllers. To do this, microbits will use radio technology. Reminder that your microbit may have the compass and accelerometer sensors combined as a motion sensor that can perform both functions. Take a look at the back of your microbit microcontroller. Find the labeled BLE antenna. The 
Bluetooth low energy antenna may be difficult to see because it is mostly consists of wires inside the microcontroller. BLE antennas are less power than standard Bluetooth antennas. These low energy antennas are great for microcontrollers because you only need two AAA batteries, three volts to power the micro bit. Even though the antenna on the micro bit is labeled BLE antenna, it supports radio technology used by the micro bit to commit, communicate with other micro bits. To activate the radio antenna in your programs, you'll use code blocks from the radio drawer. So it looks like we have radio set group one, send number, send value, send string, on radio received, on radio received, and on radio received, okay? So what's the answer, right? I'm actually going to take us back. This is the video that, um, would be, that you can see on the PLTW network. So I'll go through that real quick. As you may know, a math equation can include variables. Usually these variables are unknown values or numbers represented by letters in the alphabet. Let's take a closer look at the different types of, value, uh, types of variables used uh, to store data in programs. All right, let's check out this video. Have you ever wondered how a video or computer game keeps score? Or how the thermostat at your house stores the temperature setting you choose? Computer programs use something called variables to store information they need while the programs are being used. You may be familiar with the term variables from your math class, but variables in computing are very different than variables in math. In this video, we'll explore computing variables. Computing variables are placeholders in the computer's memory that can temporarily store a value. Each variable has a name and a value. Think of a storage box that holds okay, um, and stores papers. I want and you guys to go the box and contains information. A know, variable is like the storage box. It's a container that holds and stores information. The values inside a variable can change just like the contents of the box. Variables can hold different types of information, also known as the data type of a variable. For example, a variable can store a number data type or a text data type, also known as a string, or a logic data type, also known as a Boolean data type. Let's first explore the number data type variables. A good example to consider is how a game uses a variable to keep score. It's important to give your variables descriptive names so it's easy to understand what the variable is used for in your program. So let's call this variable score. It's best practice to initialize every variable that you plan to use in your program. To initialize means to set the starting value. Some games start players off with three lives. So three would be the initial variable value. Game scores usually begin at zero. So in our example, zero is the initial value for this variable. Every time you earn a point in the game, the value of the variable is updated to keep track of your score. When a number variable is updated to a larger value, it is said to increment. The value increases by a set amount or increment. Let's visualize the game score example in a slightly different way. The first line of code X equals zero initializes variable X to be zero. The second line of code X equals X plus one initializes variable X to be a new value. The new value is equal to the current value of X plus one. The current value is zero, so the new value will be one. If it continues to increment from the current value of one, the new value will be two. Number variables can also decrement or update to a lower value. For example, in a game, this might occur if the game takes points off your score whenever you run into an obstacle. Now let's consider an example of the text data type variable. Some games ask for the player's name before you can start. Because the name changes based on who's playing the game, this information needs to be stored as a text variable. Let's call this example variable player name. What if you want the game to say hello to each player after they enter their name? You can program the message to join the text stored in the player name variable with the string hello to say 
flow, Raquel. Variables can hold a lot of useful information in a program. They make programs a lot more flexible and reusable. All right, so there is that video. Okay, that is um, what's the answer? All right, we're going to I'm going to switch over to this again, so it might be a little easier for us to read. Variables in computer programs are used to store three data types, including numeric values, strings, or Boolean logic, such as true, false. Um, in this activity, you'll use variables to store strings and numbers. One data type that a variable can store is a string, which is made up of a sequence of characters like letters. In the following code example, the variable X equals a string of characters that spell out the phrase, hello world. What do you think STR means in this example? Anybody? STR? Show the, show the, I don't know, we'll find out. Oh, on start, so on start, it'll say, okay. All right, the following code blocks are use string to display on the micro bits LED guide. On start, show string, hello world. Another way to use strings is to set variable equal to the length of a string. You can also show the length of a string on the micro bit LED grid using a length of string code block from the text drawer found under advanced. So what numbers do you think will be shown on the micro bits LED grid when the following program one? So on button A press show number length of howdy. So I guess that would be five. Give it a try, create this program in the Microsoft programming environment and run uh, it on the emulator. All right, so let's give it a whirl. Okay, so pull up here on, start this right here. Let's get to go testing. All right, let me double check on it. It says on button A, so that's what we're gonna put. All right, on button A pressed, uh, show number. All right, so let's go to basic, show number, okay. And then it has link of, and it says howdy. It was kind of in the color of orange, maybe. I don't know, maybe that's our variable. Yeah, so it looks like we gotta make a variable. We're gonna call it howdy, All right? And then it should say howdy is one, All right? Or length of howdy. I don't know, let's go under here, text. Ah, okay, it'll be in text, I guess. All right, so we'll put that in here. And now we're gonna put meowdy, right? Meowdy. All right, let's we'll see what that says. All right, so button A, what does it say? It says eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's two, uh, ex um, parentheses on there and then these six letters. So Meowdy shows the ninth of there. That's kind of cool. All right, so we did that. All right, transmitting data. Take a look at the following math program where a variable is used to store a numeric value. Can you identify the math equation created in uh, the code? I'm pause one second. Okay. Um, can you identify the math equation X equals five times six created in the code? So um, set X to five, uh, X six, radio send number X, radio receive show number, receive number. All right, in this program, you can see two groups of code. These groups are event handlers. This means the first group of code triggers an event and the second event handler executes the events or the actions. After the first event handler computes the value of X, the radio code blocks, radio code block sends the value for variable X to another micro bit. What do you think will appear on the LED grid of the receiving micro bit when it gets the data packet from sending the micro bit? Try it out. All right, so I think it would be, the receive number would be 30. All right, so let's just give that a whirl. Um, a, okay. Um, we're gonna set, so that was in red. Set, okay, it says howdy, but I think we're gonna make a variable 
to howdy to and then we're going to put a purple all right we're going to do another one new variable we're just going to call it x thank you and then we're going to put in five times six that will be in math so five times six over here five times six and then radio send number x Okay, so that's going to be under radio, radio send number, and I think we're going to have to make that as X a value, as X, yep, and then on radio received, so go back to radio, uh, received, boom, and it should say received string. Receive number. Hmm. Maybe I clicked the wrong one. Received number. Okay, yep. Yeah. Received number. Show number, received number. So show number. And then we're going to go to variables. Um, look at that. Boom, boom. All right, so when I press A, what happens? There is that, press A. Look at that, I made a second one, so 30, all right? I click this button, but this one was connected via Bluetooth and send the radio signal, and it sent out 30, which is five times six. So that's pretty cool. All right. Okay, uh, import um, A23 Mac hex file. Okay, let's go ahead and knock that out. So let's go home and we're going to use import and file. I put this in my downloads, I believe. Do, do, do. File. There it is. Go ahead, click you. Bing, bang, boom. Hey, look at that. This stuff was already set up for us. That's crazy. That's just wild, man. All right, Mr. Taylor sent me a text. One second. Whew. All right. Okay, so let's go through um, there. All right, so we are here. We passed that. We chose that. Go ahead, initialize, prepare, send the second micro bit. It should say 30. All right, we just did that. All right, it shouldn't be any different because we did that earlier, but all right. Run the program. As you notice, the antenna symbol to the upper right hand corner lights up, showing data packet has been sent. What is the value of X? Great question, Mr. Coach D. That is going to be question number four on slide number 11. Uh, that value would be what? Anybody? Riley says 30. Is he correct? I think I lost my guys. Okay. So it is going to be 30. All right. Um, we're going to move on down. For the two micro bits to communicate with each other, they must have the same program downloaded to the processor. This makes micro bit turned into the same radio frequency, allowing them to listen in, receive any data transmitted on that radio frequency because they run both run the same program. You can start the program from either micro bit. In the emulator, try pressing the button A in the opposite micro bit. Okay. So if we run this, all right, we got that one over there. That should be 30. Now what happens if I press 30 over here? Boom, well, I goes to the other one. I didn't realize that. That's cool. All right. Code tracing a variable. Now we'll make the math program a little more difficult by adding more computations to the first event handler. Unlike variables in math, data stored by a variable in a computer program can change during the runtime of the program. One way to track how a variable's data changes throughout a program is to complete a code tracing chart and trace the variable. To determine the value of X when the following program is executed, create a code tracing chart in your PLTW gateway notebook. So that is actually going to be 
Um, right here, here's your code tracing chart, all right? Um, so your code outcome, and is it correct? All right. Um, so determine value of X when the problem program is executed, create a code trace chart for your PLTW notebook. Uh, on button A, set X to five times six, set X to X plus six, set X to X divided by six, radio set number, on radio, receive number, show number. Okay, so we can go back. Looks like we gotta add a few more uh, set codes. Here we go. I'm gonna need to get a couple of those. Mm -hmm. All right, so we said set X, and then we're gonna need another one. So it said, uh, so we need X to be in where five is plus six. Okay, so we are going to use variable X. And then we're going to do plus five, move plus six, all right, plus six. And then we're gonna do that again. We're gonna add another variable where we got X over here. And then it's going to divide by six. So that one's times plus divide, send radio number over here, right? And see what it does. All right, here's our code. So it looks like the answer is banana. banana. Um, I think that would be a six. Five times six, nice 30. 30 plus six, it's 36. 36 divided by six equals six. Fair enough, all right. Um, and then we are going to make this code. I'm going to create a second slide. Oops. And type this one in. All right, so the code um, it says set x to, sorry guys, I'm gonna put this over here at the end, set code. All right, so x is equal to five times six. The outcome is going to be 30 and then yes. And then the next one is going to say, we're gonna have 30 plus six is equal to 36. And I guess I should put that as outcome is 36. Is this correct? Yes. All right. And then the next one is going to be 36 divided by six, and that answer is going to be six, and that is going to say yes. All right, and then after that code, it'll be like, go number X, and it will say six, and did that happen? Yes. All right, so that is how I would do that, right? Oh, Genesis, yes, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, all right, moving on. So that is what our code outcome correct chart should look like. Um, for each code, write the value of X, we did that. Help you find out the value of X, show your math in there, bang. When you've completed the code and outcome, all right, I'm gonna pause. Okay, um, to run the emulator, we did that. Did you get the same value for X on your code trace chart as the LED? If not, you can figure out why by reviewing your code. Okay, we did that. All right, so this is a part of your assignment where it says working with a partner. Well, guess what? You guys are all virtual for the most part. So you guys don't, don't have partners. So you have to do this, pretend like you are your own partner. Kind of like Riley and his imaginary friends, you know. You know they they go back and forth, and you know what? As long as these um his imaginary friend doesn't start talking back and get out of line, he knows how to uh, get this done. All right, working with a partner, create a new program in the Microsoft Make Code programming environment that sends an input signal from one microbit to another. The signal will trigger an output action on the microbit to send the input. Use the following radio code block in the first event handler. Change the number zero to any number between two, uh, zero and 
255. Sending this number will trigger the second event handler for receiving micro bits. Okay, so I'm going to start a new one. Okay, so we have to start a new one. Fine. All right, go try to move, go back to testing. Okay. Uh, and then it said to uh, radio send number. Okay. Okay, radio send number, right, was there. Uh, it says X on this one. Might as well just start a new one. Okay, it was radio send, radio send number, okay. We're gonna use my favorite number, 11, okay. And, and it says to receive input signal, we perform an output action, use the following starting block code for the second event handler on radio received, receive number. Okay, um, radio on radio received number, All right? And then you can use other codes in the radio and input drawers to exchange other data between micro bits. For example, you can use the light level puzzle code block to trigger an event on a second micro bit after a certain level of light is detected by the first micro bits light sensor. You might want to experiment more with these code blocks later on. Okay. Number 10. With your partner, create a flow chart in your PLTW notebook. That is uh, not your notebook. You're going to do it on your Google slide, which will be about, yeah. Huh? All right, it's slide 16 right here. Um, I know you can pretend an imaginary partner named Steve, and then you'll put your flow chart here. Um, so with your flow chart, create, with a partner, create a flow chart in your PLTW gate with notebooks for a program that sends an input signal to a second micro bit and triggers an output action. Think about what the user will do in the first micro bit to set a code that does something on the second one. All right. So these are the shapes that you're supposed to create, right? Oval, rectangle, rhombus, arrow. Um, you'll notice that one of those is the beginning, the ends. The commands are actions, decisions, yes, no, true or false, and then move to the next step has an arrow. So you're gonna have arrows that go in between those. And then it says, use pair programming to create your program. Decide who will start as a driver or navigator, switch roles. Um, note your code for the first event handler should include input using uh, to you input command to use with the input device you created and 2.1 need input. Your code for the second event handler should include an output command. Number 12, make sure the first and second event handlers are in the same program file like the example you used earlier in the code tracing a variable section of this activity. To receive the number set over radio, you will need to drag the receive number from the radio event block as shown. Test your code in the emulator, fix any errors, and then number 14, save your program as send data, right? And that is your link right here. Um, and then we are going to skip the rest of the steps after 14 because this is uh, something that we would do in person, right? And then you'll have some conclusion questions to answer in the end, okay? So um, I'm going to delete that. Thank you. I'm gonna start my flow charts after I make my code. All right, so I'm going to go back. I'll use my code over here, testing. All right, so maybe instead of, I don't want it to send my number X, all right? Maybe I want it to say something cool, all right? So rent send, I don't want to send radio number. I want it to send radio string. Send radio string, all right? So I'm gonna take away this math equation in there and then it's going to say not receive number. It's going to say um, show, I don't think I want to show number. I want it to show string. No, show, send radio string. We're going to call it bing, bang, voila, bing, okay. And then on radio received number, I don't think I want a number, right? What do I want? I want 
um, to show I think I wanted to show number send, and then in here I can put my variable make a new variable I'm going to call this one county no what was going to be send string so it should be like show string right hmm yeah let me try and figure this one out Show number length of meowdy. Let's see what happens. Nothing? Nothing? All right, show number. I don't want to show number. I want to show my variable, right? Let's just see what it says here. Nothing. Nothing. All right. Send string on radio received number. I don't want to receive a number. What do I want here? All right. I'm going to pause my recording. So after playing around with this for a little bit, I was able to come up with uh, how to get that across. Right. So on button A, radio send string, and I put bing bang, walla walla, bing bang. And then on here, it says on radio receive the string. Right. And then it says show string and I had it as saving showing number. And so now I click on this one, I should be able to go back and forth. Now I am going to share that, right? I'm going to call this being, being bang. Right, I'm going to publish it, copy that, put that into my published link here. All right. And then you guys will work on your flow chart. I will kind of do the same thing on my flow chart uh, for here to go through basically explaining how this code worked, right? And that's, so that's what I'm looking for um, in your flow chart is after you created this, how does it work? How does that come to that? Okay. All right. So I'm going to uh, stop my recording. Thank you all guys for watching if you are watching and still, but I appreciate you.